the sooner the urgency, the immediacy of addressing the civilianization issue will actually help with retention because it will stop the burnout. Having 200 fewer people able to respond, you need to replace that capability, and it's as simple as that. We have the solutions. We see them. They're, the solutions are there, but it's let's move. Well, in a city that's overwhelmed by crime, city officials say they have identified the problems, and now they want to put their energy into finding the answers. Today, we're being joined by City Council President Helena Moreno and Council Vice President J.P. Morrell. First of all, let's talk about where we are in crime right now. Mm -hmm. And your opinion of the uh, New Orleans Police and Justice Foundation bringing down these consultants from New York. Uh, we had John Casbon on the other day, and I said, you know, why do we need outside people to come in and tell us? And he said, well, even business, they, they, get, they get people to come in and consult. I get that. But uh, we're bringing some of the same ideas that we had to pr solve crime in 1994 in 2022, and they're not the same. Mm -hmm. Well, good morning. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, let me, Sorry for the long start. question. Yeah, that was a long question. Um, I, I, I'll go ahead and, and, and start, and then JP can take it. I'll say this, you know, I mean, first, I, it's good that the administration is recognizing that there is a major crisis occurring. And, and as you know, last time we were here uh, with you, we were talking about, like, first, you have to acknowledge that there's a problem. So they acknowledge that there, there's a problem. But why did it take so long? Yeah, I, I don't know why okay. it took so long. I mean, you've heard the council, you've heard the public, we've all been consistently pushing and, um, but okay, so they recognize a problem. and. They bring in these consultants, um, which myself nor Councilmember Morrell, unfortunately, we've not been able to meet with them despite requesting to meet with them. Um, so they, they come in and in 10 days, they, they assess the, the department. Great. I think what's really interesting is that some of the, the items that they recognized were things that the council has been talking about for quite some time, including some of the reorganization of the department. So a, a little bit of, of that is, you know, why did it take, you know, someone from New York coming in to, well, and, to say that? And on that point, I asked uh, Mr. Casbon, and I said, a lot of the proposals that, that your guys are suggesting now are some of the things that that the council has suggested for quite some time. Why does the mayor all of a sudden say, well, okay, we'll accept them when these guys say it, but not when the council says it? Well, I think the thing that, that needs to be highlighted is that the mayor hasn't accepted anyone's suggestions yet, that she didn't accept ours, and my understanding is she hasn't accepted theirs yet as well. It, I thought that's what that whole news conference was I about. I think the news conference was about the general ideas and themes, but we have been given and the public has been given yeah. no specifics on what any of this costs or what it actually does. They talk about the fact we want to do incentive programs for police officers. I had many officers calling me, some of them were very excited, saying, so wait, our health care is going to be paid for from like now forever? I said, no, your health care is being paid for by the city for three years. Your bonuses are for three years. And they're like, what? And I said, this is all paid for with one-time yeah. money, yeah. with no federal plan, money, yeah. federal right. money, with no plan how it will go going forward. I said, really, what's very disingenuous, you lure a recruit from Indiana to move to New Orleans to become an NOPD police officer based upon the set of terms they think is perpetual, when in actuality, on its face, it's got a three-year expiration Well, date. I asked Mr. Casbon about that, too, and he said that, that they're going to go to business and try and keep that money uh, coming in. Well, they can't even tell us specifically how much it's going to cost. The estimate we both heard repeatedly million. is $80 yeah. million. Dollars. For the three years. For the three years. Eight minutes for the three years. They haven't given us a per year number, but the more important thing is the budget for the city of New Orleans is currently artificially propped up with one-time money as well. The actual budget of revenue isn't here, it's here. Yeah. We're not even at baseline yet. So the idea, and I appreciate how bullish Mr. Casbon is on 1994 economics, but we're not going to get back to baseline in three years. But I yeah. really do think, I think the Police and Justice Foundation, they actually care. They, they do. want to get something they done. Do. They at least have got the mayor moving on something, it, it appears. Yeah, I mean, I, look, we know that, that you, you have to take bold moves when it comes to, to retention and bringing in new officers, no doubt about it. I think what I'm really concerned about is this $80 million plan paid for with one-time money. What are the metrics? How do we know whether or not after six months it's working or not? Because I can tell you that departments across the country are also offering similar bonuses, and it's not really made a difference. So what, what's going to happen if we spend all of our one-time ARPA money on a plan that doesn't work? Well, then, then what? 
and then you leave the, the, the next mayor, whoever that may be, the next council, whoever that may be. To try and find that money. To try to find that well, money. And, and, and try to find even, what if it doesn't work, and then try to find a new whole solution but, with no with no real in money to invest in. But, but when you look at the budget as a whole, right now, the current sanitation contracts have a 70% built-in mm -hmm. increase yeah. for one time a week trash pickup. So as you're increasing the cost of government across the board, all of our, san we have to budget now going forward for almost double the amount of money for sanitation versus previous years. As you continue to rise all the various costs of government, you're gonna add an increase for the police department on top of that. And the issue is, is that I do believe there are things in the plan, for example, getting take home cars for every officer. That's basic. Every yeah. other department we're competing against, every officer gets a take home car, it's a one time cost. It completely makes sense. There are parts of the plan yeah, that I mean, if you fleshed it out, actually work, but there and are even also parts course, in like there. Moving, moving officers that have been on desk duty onto, onto the field, right. that makes total sense. You know, and bringing in civilian and, workers to well, take over jobs. But, but here's, what, here's what's interesting. In the, in the plan uh, the, the, by the New York consultants, the civilian piece is actually not in there. And so that's what, what, to me, was concerning because that's what the council has been saying, like this is what makes the most sense. And, and those are the jobs that people actually want. If you look at what Michael Harrison did in Baltimore, he posted 35 jobs for investigators that are civilian positions. He had 730 applicants for that position because it's like people so want to do So maybe that could work here. Absolutely, All absolutely. Right. If I can switch gears for a second sure. while we're, we're talking about money, money was allocated for those, those poor folks who have houses in Gordon Plaza. Right. They have been fighting for right. a while. The money is there. Right. Why is that money not being given out? <laughs> Oh my God, I mean, this is like such a headache. That money should have been given out long ago. Is I, the mayor in total control of this? Uh, yes I, or no? I will say that the council has been pushing this forward through whatever legal action that we can, through different ordinances and motions. But the mayor is unfortunately very much driving this train and and there are many obstacles and barriers that are that are just like being thrown in front of this. this and some train. of the residents have told me that that they've they've gone into a private meeting with the mayor and they offer she was offered if you'll take two hundred something thousand dollars now you can get now, paid next you can week, get paid next week. Said, right. if you if you go for the full amount it could be who knows when. Well, I mean, I think or the, never. Right. The, the, yeah. the challenge is is that we're trying to address a situation where you had obvious environmental racism in which people were lured onto a site that was a former dump to build houses. It was a super fun site. Super, fun, super fun, site. fun site. And it's very disconcerting how the mayor is treating city money as if it is her money, and it is her money she has to protect to keep for some later purpose. And the reality is, is that we have consistently pushed the ball and said, let's just get this issue resolved and move forward. Yet whenever we get to the end of what we think is the negotiation to move forward, the mayor manufactures new obstacles right. to them getting the money. And you've seen the protests. These are people who are very frustrated. And can you blame them? No, but, I mean, but, they've been waiting 40 years. But, but mean, to that point, it seems punitive mm -hmm. that as they express their frustration publicly, it's particularly directed towards the mayor for holding it up, every time they complain, a new obstacle gets added. I think the, the big issue with this is that there was counsel retained on the city's behalf that is working against the people of Gordon Plaza. You can hire lawyers, outside lawyers, to argue on your behalf, um, but unfortunately, these lawyers are not really working on the behalf Isn't of the Isn't the city supposed to serve its residents? Or did I lose that somewhere? No, nope, no I doubt. Mean, you would think that's the most basic tenet of how local government's supposed to operate, but when you look at not just Gordon Plaza, you look at sanitation, you look at the fact that we're talking about a crime wave that's began in 2020, that's got exasperated in 2021, and now is at a fever pitch in 2022, and the lack of urgency by the administration to address it, even after people screamed, hollered, even after carjackings are at an all-time high. We're the murder capital of the United States, which de facto makes New Orleans the murder capital of the world. And we still, even with this advisor's plan, there's no timeline to implement anything. Okay, and, and not to belabor a point on the mayor, but uh, the mayor said she is, as, as, as is uh, uh, ordained by the city, it's in, it's in the rules, you have to pay back travel expenses if you go from coach to first class, which she did. Mm -hmm. She says she is not paying that money back. 
You know, that is really disappointing to hear. Uh, I think what's interesting, Eric, is that she followed the rest of the policy as far as turning in documentation, paperwork, et cetera, with her travel. But the one thing that she didn't follow is reimbursing the city for upgraded luxury travel. Many of us council members are incredibly disappointed by this, and we hope that she, you know, comes to her senses and actually Can pays the city back. Can you do something? I hope that she comes to her senses and pays the city back, because if not, I believe the council is going to be forced to move forward with an ordinance that docks her pay in 2023 by roughly thirty thousand dollars. The charter, the city charter, allows for the city council to set the mayor's salary. And, and to that to that point, what's also incredibly disappointing is. You look at all of the city employees in government currently who are required by policy to reimburse the city for all their yes, travel expenses absolutely. above what's approved. Absolutely. And for the mayor to publicly take the position of, I am special, and all of you single black women who are in city government who are paying for those upgrades, you do you. I'm going to do But quickly, me. you're saying you have the power to dock the mayor's pay and get that money we back. We do, through ordinance. Right. We, the city council sets the mayor's salary each year. Mm -hmm. It is a council ordinance. Yep. We made a little loose here today. <laughs> Budget right. process starts November. All right. Well, starts October, ends November. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Eric. Let's do this again sometime. Okay.